that you've just listened to there in the short video introduction to this. But that's for not just for task one writing, that's also for task two writing and speaking. So some of those things relate more to speaking in task two than task one. Um, so we're going to focus on lexical resource now in task one academic writing. So first of all, we need to think about what is lexical resource. You saw a whole lot of um, things mentioned just before in the introduction video. But let's have a look at some five key things here that we're going to focus on today and some other things that we'll focus on as well. But here are the five key things really to think about. Now, as we come up the other side with options, uh, these are examples. So you have to match them across. Um, I like to do this so we make it like an IELTS um, real matching question where it's not the same. You see there's five, one to five, but there's only four choices. So one of them is not right. Or, or not that it's not right, one of them is not mentioned in the, the other side. So pause now, have a go with your partner about that. Um, in the task sheets that come, we will explain what the answers were for those. Now what we're going to do is a little preview here is show you what's going to happen. We're going to look at, as we've done in the other short videos, we're going to look at uh, the different kinds of task one writing that you might have to do, um, the line graph, the bar chart, pie charts and tables, and then processes and diagrams. And we'll consider uh, one or two particular features of lexical resource. So when we're writing LR here, it means lexical resource. So what you can do afterwards, if you'd like some extra work, is to go through and notice the points that we're making in the other five samples. So if we make one point about, say, our word form, which we will start with with the line graphs. We won't mention that in bar charts or pie charts, but you can have a look later on and find that same point in the other five samples. So let's start off straight away with um, a line graph. And we see one error immediately highlighted there that experience should be experienced. Um, so some people will say that's a grammar mistake. It may be a grammar mistake, but also it's a word form mistake. Um, so within this writing here, there's um, a lot of those kinds of mistakes that are coming up that are word form errors. So have a look and see if you can find them. And here they are. So here are the mistakes highlighted. Now, as we highlight them here, pause again now and see if you can think what the mistake is and how we should change it. And here are the corrections, the corrected word forms for you right here. So have a look there and consider what the, what the errors were. So they were generally word form errors. They weren't all word form. Uh, for example, the first one strongest is really the wrong kind of word um, rather than the wrong word form. So it's an, that strongest is a good example of imprecise vocab or not accurate. It's not strong, it should be highest and most consistent. Um, another example like that would be in, in the second paragraph there. You see in, that should have been during that. That's not word form, okay? So, but most of these mistakes are candidates using the wrong word form. So they're confused between adjectives, between verbs and nouns and adverbs. So that's why, as we said before, some people will consider these grammar mistakes um, but often it's the, the candidate just doesn't understand the right word form to be using. So think about that. That's a big problem in a lot of students writing and you need to think about that real uh, carefully when you do your own writing later on. So now let's do an activity. Um, and this is a good chance for you to practice yourself writing these. Now, so in line graphs in particular, we're talking about change over time. And we would like you to use the past for this one. Remember when we describe this cha change over time, we only use this for time. So in the line graph in particular, because line graphs almost always are over time, bar charts sometimes are over time, pie charts and tables sometimes as well. But line graphs are normally over time. So have a look at these five lines as they come up. Pause now. Talk to your partner. How would you describe them? So you, as you talk to your partner, you can either do it verbally or you can write in a chat box or however you're communicating with your study partner or you're in, if you're in groups, one group um, compared with the other group now. 
And if you'd like even more practice, then you can just draw lines yourself and describe the lines to your partner. Don't show your partner. Describe it to the partner and they have to draw the line and see how accurate you are in drawing those lines. Now, if we move on to bar charts, um, in terms of a bar chart, we're going to look now at good, how this candidate uses good comparing and contrasting language. So have a look at the words here, and not just one word, there's, there's good chunks that they use. So you see them coming up in the blue here, were considerably higher than um, compared to was similar for both so that comparing different chunks of information which is very important in the IELTS test um, in fact the instructions will tell you to make um, comparisons where relevant on the actual question sheet so IELTS and task one want you to compare so using good contrast language is very important in the IELTS test um, now what kind of words are under the boxes? So you're going to see these boxes in blue now. Um, and so we're going to do this slightly differently. So this time, um, we're not going to show you. And have a think yourself. What do you think might be under those blue boxes? Again, talk to your partner here. So here, here they are. Here are the words. Now, these kinds of words... Um, I like to call them adverbs of uncertainty. That's not the real grammar word for them. But in fact, what they're doing is that even though they are making it a little bit vague by saying around or about or roughly or approximately, all those words are okay, what they actually do is make it exact because we can't tell what these numbers are. For example, the pink line, the highest pink line there, we can't tell what that is. It's very hard to be exact about that. So we want to use that kind of language all the time in a line graph and a bar chart. Remember, again, with this language here, do not use it in a table or a pie chart because in tables and pie charts, they give you exact numbers. So we don't want to use this language. But this language is very important in bar charts and also in line graphs. So here's another activity for you. So we've got... Um, about, roughly, approximately, around, which we use all the time. And then we've got these ones which are just lower than a number. So 98% would be nearly 100. Or if it was slightly over the other way, just over or slightly over 500. So now there's another chance for you to practice here. Um, so we're going to focus on two and three there, not number one, the idea of roughly and approximately. That's pretty easy, really. You can just use that with any number. But students sometimes make mistakes and are not sure about these two and three here. So have a go with these numbers practicing this. So if you split yourself into student A and student B and you describe those numbers. Again, if you'd like further practice, make up some numbers yourself write the number down and then say it and compare it with your partner.